Hello and welcome to the Administering CAPTI Read Basics tutorial. In this video, we will be reviewing how to set up and assign a CAPTI Read Basics assessment to your students. Begin by logging in to your CAPTI account. Navigate to the Assessment tab on the left side of your home screen. And to create a new CAPTI Read Basics assessment, Click on the new assessment on the right side of your screen, select Read Basics, and the creation window will appear. The first thing I want to do is think of a district naming convention in order to stay organized over the year. I'll use my name, the benchmark period, the year, and I'm showing you part one and part two today. Next, I have my student friendly name. I want to assign a clear, easy to recognize name so my students can quickly identify it when they log in. I'll choose their teacher's name, seventh grade, benchmark period, and this will be part one. And I'll show you part two in just a few minutes. The next option is selecting the difficulty level. To accommodate a wide range of learners and to ensure developmental appropriateness, Read Basics includes three difficulty levels. Level A is appropriate for students in elementary school or students in the fourth and fifth text band complexity. Level B is appropriate for middle school students or students in the sixth, seventh, and eighth text band complexity. And level C is appropriate for high school students or 9th through 12 text complexity. All test items are vertically scaled, so you can compare results across grade levels and track progress over time. The scaling ensures growth can be measured no matter a student's starting level. Students always receive content that matches their skill level. Notice we also have a personalized option. The personalized difficulty level selects the most appropriate difficulty level based on the student's last scale score. If you set the difficulty level using the personalized option prior to any tests being taken with a score received, the difficulty level of the student's first test will default to the student's grade level band. Please note, the personalized difficulty uses a multi-stage adaptive design. This means that the test does not adjust after each question. Instead, it adjusts difficulties in stages. Using the student's overall subtest performance to set the difficulty level for that subtest the next time the student takes it. So for this example, I'm going to select level B as I'm testing my middle school students. The next option I have is to show or hide the timer to my students. If I feel that my students might be stressed by seeing the timer, I can hide it. It's important to understand that Read Basics is a timed assessment. The subtest will be timed regardless of your choice here. This means the students will have a set amount of time for each subtest after the allotted time has passed, students will automatically be moved to the next subtest. Students will not have unanswered questions scored against them. Next, I need to select which subtest that I'm going to assess. It is recommended to split the subtests into two assessments and administer subtests one through four as part one and subtests five and six as part two. You can additionally select individual subtests if you're progress monitoring for a particular skill. So I'm doing part one, so I'll select one through four. Notice how the time is increasing as I select each subtest. So now for part one, I can see that I should plan for about 36 minutes. The advanced student filters are for once you have student data. I'll go over the advanced student filter when we create part two of this fall benchmark. I'll push create 
And now I need to add my students. I'll right away see a list of my students appear. If you are a school or district administrator, this will be a long list. I have the options of choosing these drop downs. I can select entire classes, entire grades, or specific class. I'm going to test all of my seventh graders, so I'll choose add all. I have 86 students, so in a minute, these buttons will turn blue and I'll have a pop-up that say all 86 have been added. I'll select done. And now I have a few more options. I can add a proctor who might be another administrator, teacher, or assistant that I want to have access to this assessment. I can add them the same way I added my students. Additionally, I have a scheduling option. While this is completely optional, this can be used to create assessments that will automatically start and end at your time of choosing. By selecting Schedule 4, the assessment will be created and only made available for students on this entered time and date. Due on, students will be told when they open the assessment of their due date. I have the option to launch this assessment now or save the draft. I'm going to launch this assessment. I'll receive this pop-up that says they can immediately start working. And now it's been created. So now that we've created part one, let's go back and create part two. So we'll do the same thing. Start on assessments, select new, read basics, and for consistency, I'll create the same naming conventions as before. This time I'll do part two. Again, for my students, same naming convention, but adding part two. I'll select the same difficulty. I'll show the timer. This time I'm selecting reading efficiency and reading comprehension. As you can see, I need to plan for about 43 minutes for part two for these two subtests. Now I'd like to show you the advanced student filters. So notice the two columns. I have assess skill only if on the left and exclude subtests only if on the right. Let's review each of these. The rushed option is for students who the system flagged as having unreliable scores for going too fast in a subtest. After a big administration, it is common to have a small percentage of students who have rushed on some of the subtests. If you want to retest all of the students who rushed, you can select the rushed button, select all subtests, and then name your assessment something like fall makeup test or something similar. Then assign all students with rush score to this assessment. They will only be assessed on the subtest where they rushed. Unreliable or missing. Read Basics calculate scores based on a complex algorithm. The algorithm requires the students to complete about 30% of each subtest in order to produce a reliable score. Sometimes students will not answer enough questions and will show unreliable or missing scores. You can go through the same process explained with the rush subtest to create a makeup assessment for students who received unreliable or missing scores. The final option in the first column is the MTSS recommended. Sometimes the MTSS recommendation for a group of students will be to complete additional subtests. You can use this filter to create an assessment with only these subtests selected as rec recommended by the MTSS algorithm. The next column is exclude subtest only if. 
The first one is below decoding threshold. This will exclude the reading comprehension subtests for students in this assessment scoring below the decoding threshold, which is 235. Above test out threshold. This is the final option. This will remove all subtests for a student if they have scored above the test out threshold of 305, meaning they have mastered the skill. I'm going to go ahead and create my assessment, add my students as I did before. I'll have a pop-up in just a second. There they are, click done, and I'll launch it now. Now my students can immediately begin working in part two. I'm going to log out as a teacher and log back in as a student so we can see how this looks for them. So as soon as I log in as a student, I can see my assessment pops up to the first assessment and it's spotlighted. I'll click this assessment. I'll choose start. The directions will come up first, and then I can begin my practice. And begin my assessment. Once I'm into my assessment, I do have the option to pause my assessment as a student if I need a comfort break. And I can come back exactly where I left off at a later time. This tutorial has guided you through the process of setting up and assigning a CAPTI Read Basic assessment. From creating a new assessment with appropriate naming and difficulty levels to selecting subtests, assigning students, and utilizing scheduling options. By following these steps, you can effectively administer benchmark or progress monitoring assessments tailored to your students' needs. For additional support, please refer to CAPTI's resources or other tutorials. Thank you for watching and happy assessing.